Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today, including a cranky sun, volcano, earthquake news, a long-range earthquake forecast, new satellites, and more. Well, we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're seeing a few pops and snaps going left at the limb, just ahead of the coronal hole, and at the bright active regions to the north. It does not appear we have any significant plasma ejected our way, but that was a definitive stirring of the sleeping giant. Let's get a closer look at those sunspots on the north because we went from a depressingly weak sunspot scenario to a significant test of the Earth-facing solar quiet. This grouping really came out of nowhere and actually is comprised of two separate beta sunspot groups. Not much mixing in their middles, but they are set to collide as they face Earth this week, could see some activity, or at least a significant challenge to the trending calm of our star on path to minimum. Thus far, we're not even breaking up into C-class flare range, so we come to the solar wind. Things are relatively calm right now, but that shift up top in blue, the phi angle, indicates the next coronal hole stream is less than 36 hours away. We expect it to have a great auroral display, actually, and a good chance at level 1 or 2 geomagnetic storm conditions. Of course, there are the earthquakes to discuss, and yesterday we mentioned watching Japan. Indeed, Japan took the largest earthquake of the last day by a fairly wide margin. Luckily, it was not damaging. But we also saw the lithosphere get active again in Italy. This makes their second volcano to go off in about a week. I'd like to take a moment to revisit something here now that we're at the end of February. Many of you remember this chart showing large quakes per month by magnitude. We had said here in early January when we made that chart that we had peaked in December and we were going to have a bit of quiet. And with a 2 and a 4 for those lines in January, we followed that up with a 3 and a 0 for February, assuming no major quakes today. But even if they come, February and January have been way below average and that is about to end. The official mid to long range observers earthquake forecast for the globe is for an end to this calm of the past two months. We have major planetary geometry upcoming and expected solar awakenings in the coming weeks as well. So an uptick in earthquakes overall and increased risk of magnitude eight and higher events exist until around April 15th. We're spending some time at Mars. This is the ExoMars Orbiter and its planned run through the coming months, including some very tight orbital moves that will take it close enough for incredible views of the landscape. And speaking of the landscape, we've also got a couple pieces from NASA down on the surface, including dust devil tornadoes and a scene that utterly shocked me. Folks, that is one day wind-driven motion on Mars landscapes. Just one day. Up next, we've got the first images from the GOES-16 Solar Imager. These were taken at the end of January, and it'll provide an excellent backup to SDO whenever they finally set it public. They've chosen six wavelengths, and I can't really be too upset. You'll notice our pink coronal hole favorite isn't there, but we can use 193 and 94 instead, not to mention SDO is still up and working. This one is a relic from the SOHO EIT days, the blue 284, but if done properly, it will be the best coronal explosion study tool. I promise. Folks, we've got a cold wave so bad in the Sudan that people are dying from the freezing temperatures. Oh yeah, that's for the second time this month. While the US has been lucky, we've now seen snow twice in the Sahara after a 40-year hiatus, snow records in Egypt, cold records across the Arabian Peninsula, snow at the Sun's Anvil, and so many cold deaths from Afghanistan to Taiwan it strains credulity for regions that lack heating or any way to deal with the dropping temperatures. Maybe lucky wasn't the right word as you eye that low pressure earth spot in the central states. We did have the deadliest weather January since 1969 with all those tornadoes and we'll be reminded of that tonight. Here we close out February with severe storms coming in, possibly even those tornadoes as well. Welcome to spring three weeks early. We've got pressure and radar forecasts and old school global run and shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.